Oh, hello there. My name is Billy. Today, I'm going to be making one of my favorite foods, tonkatsu, which is a dish originating from Japan. Basically, it's a fried pork cutlet. I had like a, my fair share of it at teriyaki restaurants growing up. Got all my supplies here. Supplies. Got my all my got all my ingredients here. So let's get started. So the first step we're gonna do is take do all the steps that do not involve the pork because we don't want to cross contaminate. So first thing we're gonna do is prepare the dredge for the the katsu. So I'm just gonna grab some bowls here. Okay. And then a plate for the panko. Right. So. So the recipe calls for one egg per two pork cutlets. So we have six pork cutlets. So if you do the math, that means we need three eggs. And I got three eggs right here. So we're just gonna crack them into the bowl. Very simple. Uh, I would say that, oh, whoops, nothing happened. I would say that I'm a pretty, big lover of Japanese cuisine. I'm a big fan of sushi, like sashimi or rolls. Uh, let me wash my hands real quick. I just did like omakase like a few months ago with uh, shiro and it was great. Another another ingredient that I really like to make, another ingredient, another Japanese food that I really enjoy is uh, okonomiyaki, which is a Japanese omelet, mostly comprised of cabbage, mostly comprised of cabbage, but um, there's different styles, like if you, I, what I believe is Hiroshima style. Um, it's served on top of pan fried, similar to yakisoba noodles, topped with uh, bonito flake, which are like the pinkish flakes that you put on top. And they almost dance when they're put on top of something hot. Has like a mild fishy flavor. All right, I'm just beating these eggs here. All right. Okay, and then get the panko. So the thing with the panko, here's the panko. Got a box at Hiwaji Maya, pretty cheap, like $1.99. So, yeah. This is also Japanese. Shoutouts to the Japanese. Okay. Just gonna open this bag right here. Oh, it's resealable. That's pretty dope. Wait, hey, wait, hey, shit. Um, yeah, please excuse my attire. I just got back from the gym and I have to wake up really early tomorrow. Okay, let's see. Um, let me check really quick what the recipe calls for. Pete, it does not specify how much panko we need. So I'm just gonna pour like a decent amount, like see that oh the lighting is not great okay well I just poured let's say a third of the bag and the bag is eight ounces or 226.8 grams I'm gonna season the panko mixture as well so I'm just gonna try something a little bit have some variation so I think the, I'm gonna mix a few with just salt in the panko and then after that, I'm gonna add like some chili powder to see if it tastes better. Okay, so I'm just gonna season. I'm not sure. So I honestly not sure how much salt to put in this, but just judging from how much, how much um, panko we have, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And of course. Always wash your hands thoroughly. 
and cleanly, I don't know if that's correct, before you cook, because you're gonna be touching a lot of ingredients. All right, okay, I think that's good, because we're, we're also gonna season the pork chops as well, so I think this is good. So we have our egg and panko set up, so I'm just gonna set this aside for now and start prepping our pork chops. I'm just gonna grab a cutting board. I just seen this on TV, but like if you wanna tenderize your pork chops a bit, you wanna actually hit them with a rolling pin and kind of like break down the fibers and the meat. So I don't have a rolling pin, but I think this will do this will do something similar. This will suffice. And then uh so Safeway got this for $3.99 a pound. <laughs> $3.99 a pound. It was originally $12.82 and I saved $4.28. So if you're Asian, you know we about those deals. So when I was trying to, when I was like thinking of doing this, like katsu actually comes in like many forms, right? You can you can use it to bread. It's just a it's just kind of a method of breading. You can use it to fry anything. Like like katsu burger became I feel a pretty big thing. Okay, so this is something that my mom kind of. Uh, me. I guess like my assumption initially is that pork has already, or when you buy meat from the deli, it's quote unquote quote washed, but uh, my mom being a pretty OCD in terms of like cleanliness, and it's not a bad thing, like, like pros and cons for sure. I'm going to go ahead and wash this. So a habit I like to make is like whenever I touch raw meat and then I know I'm gonna go grab something else from the pantry, like play say like plastic wrap right now, I always wash my hands. Like, just going back to that thing about like my mom being a very being a germaphobe, I definitely I definitely got some of that. So I'm just gonna wash my hands really quick. Okay. Oh. So one step we skipped was um we didn't we didn't dry meat. Oh, looks like the rice is done already. gonna wrap it so it doesn't splatter too much. Now I am pounding this meat, but I'm honestly not sure how much I should pound it. Fuck. Alright. Don't ever someone could take that out of context and turn it into like a sexual innuendo. But you know what I mean. Yeah, basically just tenderizing the meat, breaking down the fibers. So one thing we forgot to do is we did not dry the meat after washing it and we don't want moisture in the meat when we put in the oil. It'll cause it to splatter a lot more. Water and oil don't mix. So they have different I wanna say densities. I wasn't I wasn't very good at chemistry. I'm just gonna do the other side. Actually, I might as well season right now. So I'm gonna season these pork chops and like, what is this thing? Like, and again, like, I'm just pretty much guesstimating. I guess like a basic rule is just to 
put enough salt so it covers the surface area of the pork chop. Okay, we can add some like pepper as well. Okay. While I'm doing this, actually I'm going to put some pepper in the panko. I just like it a little bit. Like typically when, when I eat katsu, there's not a strong flavor of pepper. I wonder why salt and pepper are paired together and why there's such a prominent ingredient in just like any cooking. Oh, I guess I'm here watching my hands. Season this side. Again, just cover the surface area. so it doesn't dry, it doesn't dry out. And if you're wondering, I literally just thought of this. I was like, I'm cooking alone and it'd be fun to make a cooking video. Pork chops are seasoned, we need to bread them still, but let me get a pan really quick. Okay, who washed this? This is not clean. Uh, okay, so honestly, I don't know how hot I should fry the katsu, but I'm gonna check the recipe really quick. Um, in terms of oil, I'm not really sure like what they would use traditionally. I think I'm just gonna use olive oil, it's healthier. I believe it has a higher smoking point, whatever that means. I just poured enough just to create almost just like a thin bed of olive oil. So it's like a mini pool. Like I don't want to use all like a ton of oil to the point where it's like a bath, but just enough so the pork is a bit submerged in the oil as it's cooking because I think that's important. All right, so the oil is heating up. Just went ahead and read the recipe. It says that you want the oil, temperature of the oil to be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have a thermometer, so luckily there's a section for that. And what I can do, what you can do is drop a piece of panko and if it sinks, sinks down to the bottom and then comes back up to the middle, it's 350 degrees. So I'm gonna get this set up. Okay, so let's get our um, Breading station together. Um, okay, I should probably use flour. Yeah, I should probably use flour. Okay, so got the flour. Okay, so how the steps are looking. Um, so it goes flour, egg, panko. right now and so I'm just gonna take the pork chop put it in flour um, make sure it's 
sure it's all covered. Oh. Shake off the excess, pat off the excess. Put in an egg. Okay. Egg step done, panko. One thing I'm doing right now is uh, making sure that the sides are covered as well, the side of the pork chop, because you have the front, the, the top and the bottom, but then the sides are difficult to get, so make sure you get the sides as well. All right, I'm just gonna actually just do one for now, cook, see how it comes out. Um, it'll be our trial pork chop, because this is my first time making this and I don't really know what I'm doing. So, when you're putting some, putting anything into a pan, meat into a pan, you want to lay away from you so that the oil doesn't splash in your direction. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I think it's because I had water in my hands. That's what caused the splatter. That's a bit scary. Go ahead and flip this with pair of tongs. I was not able to get the amazing golden brown color I see at restaurant. All right, everyone. I just finished frying up the katsu. First trial didn't go too well, but I think the second trial is Looking a lot better. So, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and make the sauce and we can eat. So, the four main ingredients of a katsu sauce, according to the recipe I'm using, is consists of tomato ketchup, sugar, Worc Worc Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, and oyster sauce. And open this bottle here. So it costs two and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. So I'll just have the same. So this is one tablespoon. Two tablespoons. And, and then it costs for what I believe one and a half tablespoons of oyster sauce. Let me double check. So one teaspoon of oyster sauce. One tablespoon might have been too salty. Gotta go with the Lee Kum Ki. Yeah, oyster sauce by itself is very, very salty. 
Um, I guess uh, growing up, typically what we put oyster sauce on are vegetables. Uh, my mom would often, because it's very simple, just boil or steam vegetables, uh, such as Chinese broccoli or yu choy. And since vegetables are pretty bland, we would put oyster sauce on top of it to give it some like flavor. Oyster sauce, some ketchup right here. You know, I wonder which came first, ketchup or costume sauce. I'm gonna mix this. Um, I guess like right off the bat, it's not as thick of a consistency as I am accustomed to. But let's see how it tastes, because I think taste is also very important. Ooh, I could use more sugar. See, this is not in the recipe, but I'm gonna add some honey. I think it will add a nice dimension of sweetness. Use a little bit more sweetness. I think another great thing about the honey is that it creates a thick, adds some thickness to the sauce as well, which is something that we also need. It's kind of thin right now with the, because our sauce is mainly Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. I think that's good. That tastes pretty good to me. All right, and that's it. So we got the sauce, we got the katsu. Let's just go ahead and plate. All right, everyone, we just finished making our bowl and I think it looks pretty good. Pretty simple, um, yeah, uh, so let's dig in here, let me see, let's try it, that was pretty good, alright, here it goes. Not bad. It's crispy. I think the pork is, if I were to say the pork was like a little bit overcooked, but it's not too bad at all. Wow, I didn't realize, wow, after making this, 
like katsu sauce is very simple. Just Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. I had a lot of fun making this. I'm definitely gonna make this more from now on. Cause uh, katsu, when I go out to eat, it's like 10 bucks, but I just make it at home and it's, 10 bucks, I could buy six pork chops. So I could eat katsu, assuming that I eat one pork chop per day, for six days, or not six days, for six meals. All right guys, thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you found this cooking video helpful. This is Billy, signing out, reminding you to take life one bite at a time. Peace.